As we come to celebrate the opening of the Wynn Hospital, I think it's really important that we go back and look at the decades of work that has led to this. This is the result of boards of directors who had vision about bringing healthcare together. It's about the courage of previous CEOs who really did the hard work necessary to bring them together. It is about the commitment of our elected officials and their dedication to doing what's right for our community. And it's about the support of all the people in the Mohawk Valley who never gave up hope for a better future. I came to Utica in 1982 when I was uh, in the CEO of Children's Hospital and Rehab Center and Faxton Hospital. The month I came here, there were nine hospitals in Oneida and Herkimer County. I think the unique part of that situation was that as you looked at the historical files, uh, there had been studies, both of those indicated that there's basically excess capacity in Oneida and Herkimer County, carefully phrased, but essentially there's too many hospitals. But then during the 90s, the boards of uh, Faxton and St. Luke's Memorial realized it made sense to bring the hospitals together. People started to, to recognize that if we didn't have any hospitals in Utica, how many would we build? Just one. One of the key elements of the integration and the ultimate consolidation of Faxons in St. Luke's was obviously the duplication of the services and financial. Financial issues were, were critical, especially if you are looking at this is our problem today financially, but in the next five to 10 years, what are our financial issues going to be? Will we be able to buy equipment for multi-million dollars? How many of them will we need? There was tremendous duplication also. Two laboratories, two radiology programs, double med surge programs that we would have on both sites. And that had to be addressed. And it eventually was. Andy put a lot of the physical pieces together between the two hospitals. He expanded the cancer program. He relocated, I think he relocated some of the rehab programs. He, he did some really important elements of moving services around to be more efficient. There were economies with purchasing and information services. In fact, through Centrax, we were able to uh, automate the laboratory further. The state competitive, you almost had to do that. Medicine had gotten to the point where it was getting more and more difficult to have a freestanding single hospital. And we at St. E's were sort of competing with St. Luke's and duplicating services, which was becoming economically not feasible. So our board at St. E's um, charged me with trying to Wait, work a way out that we could have an affiliation. I started working and putting out probes to St. Luke's and I think they were experiencing the same problems we were. So um, I think I had a welcome partner. At the time, uh, both hospitals were looking to affiliate to become part of a larger system because it became apparent that uh, independent community hospitals were going to have a struggle going forward um, and both hospitals were looking at affiliations with outside outside the community with bigger uh, programs but um, people realized that uh, by bringing in outside resources for both competing organizations it was simply going to add to the duplication of services inefficiencies uh, wasteful spending on trying to compete with each other and that eventually the best way to go was to create a single system between the two Utica uh, hospital systems and uh, the creation of the cardiac surgery program was sort of the uh, impetus that led to the consolidation of services. We developed in 97 a, a working relationship finally with St. Elizabeth's, with the Heart Institute. A lot of people never realized that was actually a licensed hospital that existed only on paper. And jointly we provided cardiac services, including now heart surgery at St. E's and cardiac cath at both hospitals. It became apparent that we needed to extend cardiac services. Uh, once the cath lab was developed, and there also was one that started almost simultaneously at St. Luke's, we were sending out more patients 
per year than any other cardiac program pretty much in the nation. It was 500 patients roughly to Elmira. We tried to send them to Syracuse, but they simply were too busy. So the, even the state ultimately had to acknowledge that this was a tremendous need, that we needed cardiac surgery here. And ultimately in 1996, uh, that was certified by the state health commissioner and the governor. When the Heart Institute came about, um, it was uh, meant to have most of the cardiac services centered at the St. Elizabeth's campus, cardiac catheterization, ultimately angioplasty and open heart surgery. A key aspect of that uh, agreement was consolidating uh, maternity services at St. Luke's so we could build a new maternity service, the birthplace. And this is where I give the sisters uh, and the order a lot of credit is they gave up maternity services, which when you think about it, for a Catholic organization to give up maternity care uh, to St. Uh, Luke's Memorial, I think was a big move. Part of that also was the fact that uh, most of the pediatric, inpatient pediatric uh, services were relocated to St. Luke's, which really allowed us then to grow the level two neonatal nursery uh, and bring in neonatologists, which really, you know, s raised the bar, if you will, on uh, premature babies and babies that were unfortunately ill when they were first born. I would like to give credit to two community leaders, that being Nick Matt and John Soggs, who worked very diligently and for a long period of time trying to convince Sister Rose Vincent and Andy Peterson, the respective CEOs of St. Elizabeth and St. Luke's Hospital, uh, that it would be in the best interest of the community at large if they could combine and that the state was not going to let us have an open heart surgery program here unless it encompassed the entire city. Uh, so it took a great deal of statesmanship on their part to get this to happen, but ultimately they prevailed and I think the area has benefited tremendously. During that time, it allowed the hospitals to uh, establish a more of a working relationship with each other and a little bit of a sense of trust that wasn't there previously. I don't believe that the Mohawk Valley Health System would have come together as easily, quite frankly, as if the Mohawk Valley Heart Institute wasn't created. When Sister Johanna retired, um, we did a national search and we hired Rick Ketchum to be our CEO. Then when St. Elizabeth uh, hired its first lay administrator, uh, Rich Ketchum came to town. You know, and Rich had been a seasoned um, healthcare CEO, understood the landscape. And so we started a dialogue, he and I, uh, about is there a possibility this could happen? And he started talking and educating his board. I started talking and educating my board about, you know, this is the direction we think that the organization is ultimately going to move in. Um, whether we're forced to do it, because unfortunately somebody, you know, goes bankrupt, or, or or we do it on our own and let's plan our own destiny, and not have somebody else come in and tell us what what we should be doing. Rick was a wonderful CEO. He had been a CEO for many many years, and he came to town, but he was I think instrumental in urging me. He made me understand how important it was to merge and to have the two facilities become one efficient facility, rather two inefficient facilities. When I came to the community, I felt that an affiliation was needed pretty quickly because each facility was competing for scarce resources. And by that, I mean employees, doctors, access to capital, things that are just absolutely vital to run a hospital. And each hospital was struggling, honestly, financially, and we were competing with each other. And it seemed to me that it was worth at least a conversation about might there be a better way to do that. And so what we did, the first idea was, let's at least sit down and talk to each other. And you know, to make that work, the Sisters of St. Francis had to be party to that discussion, um, as did both boards. Absent that willingness, there was no way it would have ever come together. The Sisters knew that we needed to affiliate in order to survive, 
and they were able to come to Syracuse with us when we met with the bishop. Judge Siegel and myself went numerous times to Syracuse, and we met with the order, uh, the Sisters of St. Francis again. We met with the bishop, the bishop of Syracuse in this case, and uh, many times and had many discussions uh, which which were vital. And I'm sure Scott was having, Scott Perra was having conversations with various constituents within their organization. Once everyone decided to talk, then we could all be at the table together, but each had to say, are we willing to even come to the table to have a conversation? And there was a committee that was developed partially from St. Elizabeth's and partially from St. Luke's to come together for the merger of the organization. And that took, I'm not quite sure how long, but I, the final merger happened in March of, 9, of 2014. And it was a marriage made in heaven, which was the way it should be since St. E's is a Catholic hospital. And that's really what led to the formation of Mohawk Valley Health System, and uh, the rest is history, as I say. Baxton St. Luke's and St. Elizabeth have had a long tradition of quality health care, whether it was trauma programs, cardiac surgery, maternity care, or stroke program. But in 2014, we came together as MVHS, and at that point, we had the opportunity to make those programs even better. And then shortly after that, we decided it was time for a new hospital. And when we did so, we took that opportunity to look at what we could provide for this community, our staff, and our organizations as a whole, and determine how much better could that care be. The decision that I recall was at the time the medical leadership here had already consolidated the three hospitals, but it still was not cost effective, as well as these were old buildings. Um, surgery suites needed to be updated. You needed new technology. Um, they were small. So it was determined that one hospital, state of the art, would be the best way to go for this community. This area demonstrated uh, true leadership uh, in taking the initiative to say we are going to consolidate and merge and come together because we care and want to provide the best quality acute care possible. And we do have aging infrastructure here. And I think as a result of the vision of the administration of the hospital and, and the board of uh, directors of the hospital and the community as a whole, recognizing that this would be an important step uh, in the right direction to fulfill that objective of quality acute health care. I think it's a, a true credit to the way we uh, were able to communicate, cooperate, collaborate to ensure that uh, that money came to the city of Utica because it, there was truly a need. One of the reasons too, I think the Department of Health and, and the governor and the Senate Assembly uh, saw this uh, need for a hospital, for, for funding for a new hospital in this region is we were doing things right here. Um, the, the hospital systems came together uh, in a merger where in other areas across upstate New York, you have hospital systems that don't work together very well. And in this area, the hospital systems worked very well together and created that merger uh, to provide good health care for people in the region. I also think that there was a, a need here because we had two existing hospitals, uh, St. Elizabeth's, which was 100 years old, uh, St. Luke's, which was built in the 50s. Uh, there were a lot of inefficiencies between the two hospitals, uh, and they saw a need here for a new uh, hospital to bring state-of-the-art health care to, to the region. The consolidation of MVHS years ago led to, I believe, this coming to fruition uh, with a new facility in downtown Utica. And it really was something that I think we had hoped for and we're looking forward to make a reality. The hospital uh, truly has become an anchor in the part of the city that had long been in decay and needed a boost and the hospital really has given this city, which deserved to have a rebirth, has now anchored that area. We have the auditorium, we have Nexus, we have restaurants. We have things that many of us who have lived here for a very long time never thought we'd see this in our lifetime. And we are. 
I supported downtown from day one because I really believed that it would really be a transformation on both fronts, healthcare and the economy. It's just a great place to live and to have a facility like we're going to have in the Wynn Hospital and to have residency programs that we're going to have. We have, I think it's seven residency programs. It's big time stuff and we're going to get a reputation of having high quality medical care when you have the Masonic community and you have the Heart Institute there and you put it all together. Anybody who doesn't come here, I think is foolish. It is a great, great place to live. The growth in our residency program during this time is a testament to how attractive the Mohawk Valley region and the Mohawk Valley Health System are to physicians who want to train here and we hope eventually stay here. Life was beautiful in Utica for us. And I'm so glad that this hospital will add to the security of people living here who at one point or another in their lives need to have the best of medical attention so they can have as happy a life as I did. So I think uh, people would always ask if we could sum up in one word what you want to see for your community. And it was always very difficult, but ultimately I came with the word vibrancy. Because a vibrant community, a growing community, will breed success throughout all segments of the community. So I believe that uh, this new facility will bring not only a state-of-the-art uh, bricks and mortar, but also all the technology that will be available and, and used to help people stay healthy. So when you look at the, uh, the administration, the medical staff, uh, the support staff, all of them working together to provide the best care possible, this is gonna be uh, a magnet. Uh, and trying to continue to grow this city. Because if you can assure people that they're gonna receive the best possible health care under the newest uh, conditions, I think a lot of people are gonna be excited about that and energized as a result of uh, what we have here. And as uh, this will be an important anchor of many of the other things that will be taking place from an economic development perspective. So it all contributes to the revitalization of this community and this region and, and this facility and those who work here will be an important element of all of that. Uh, and again, the most important aspect in my opinion is the people of the city of Utica and the surrounding communities will receive the best possible health care uh, across this state and nation. So the Wynn Hospital is going to create a ton of opportunities for this community. First of all, MVHS can now market it for the ability to recruit physicians and other staff to this community, something that we've struggled in the past with. It also is a, a great opportunity for the city of Utica and the Mohawk Valley region to know that we, in addition to so many other things that we offer here, we also now have the state-of-the-art hospital. The impact on healthcare for us, for us, you know, um, is, it's going to be fantastic. I mean, everything, every startup has challenges, but um, you know, the, the team that's there now, I don't think I can think of a team that's more ready to deal with the unforeseen. As a, um, a nurse that grew up in the MVHS system, having worked at St. Elizabeth as a staff nurse, a CNO for a number of years, and then chief operating officer, it's been an absolute pleasure and experience to work on this project and to see it come to fruition after all this time brings me a lot of sense of pride for myself but for the community and all the other people that I've worked with for all these years. Without the work of all the past administrators, the past nurses and chief operating officers and the workers in every capacity we would never have been able to come to this level of success and excitement in our community. And we're one of the only hospitals being built this year in, in the state of New York, and I think we're going to attract a lot of attention. <laughs> so this is certainly not the end of our story. We all believe the future here is really bright. So the Wynn Hospital, this is for you.